study buddies, my painting buddies, my workmates, whatever you're up to right now. Um, welcome back to my sketchbook and whatever it is that you are working on, let's just hang out for an hour, keep each other accountable and focused and uh, it would be lovely if you could let us know in the comments what you are getting on with while you watch this. Um, it was a lot of fun to find out last time so I think that should be a regular thing that we do but for now uh, let's get started. We are going to spend the next hour just sketching. Um, I'm going to do a house today. It's been a long time since I've drawn one of my kind of watercolour houses so I think I might actually work quite small today and I'll zoom you in if I have to. Um, but yeah the other day I got to work on a little um, some watercolour doodles uh, like in my old style and just reminded me how much I enjoyed that Let's just fix the lighting on this. The light's going to be in and out today, so hopefully uh, you'll be able to see all the way through. I'm just going to start with my usual basic shapes. Uh, I'm slightly rusty on the old houses, but today I wanted to take the pressure off of it, just do something that I'm more, more confident with um, and something that I know I'm, I'm bound to enjoy. Um, as always, I'm using Google Maps, Street View, just found a house uh, that I liked the look of after a lot of wandering around the streets, the uh, virtual streets. Um, I had to decide on something because I know that I have a delivery coming today between one and two, uh, so I'd like to be done with this by one, so I had to just quickly decide on a house and stop overthinking it and just get on with it. Now last time we did this, uh, a lot of people said in the comments that they were working on videos for their own art channels, so that was really interesting to see. Um, it's nice to know that we're keeping each other company doing pretty much the same thing. Um, and I thought it'd be a nice idea if people want to leave their info below if you are working on stuff for your own art channel. Um, I think it'd be a great way for you know fellow creatives to connect with each other if you want to leave a little, little note in the comments. Um, just say what kind of art you're up to and see if people want to check out your channels because it's always nice to discover new creatives on YouTube um, and it doesn't have to just be art, you could be doing anything really. Um, I think we're all in similar creative fields, um, even if they're not, if you don't think they're specifically art related, it would be interesting to connect in that way. I need to remember not to spend too long on the sketch. Um, I don't want to get too carried away with it. But it does feel it does feel nice to be back um, working on my, my straight lines and my little boxes and things. It's nice to have that structure. Um, I just love the way it looks sometimes. I'm always jumping back and forth between different styles. I'll do this for a little while and then miss my loose gouache landscapes. But I don't really think you need to limit yourself to just one thing. Um, because, you know, who says that you should just do what you enjoy doing? And today I'm enjoying drawing a building. Last week, we, or last episode, I guess, we talked about uh, the books I was reading, and you guys seemed really interested in that. Uh, I didn't think that people really would be, but I suppose a lot of us are readers, and it is always interesting to hear about what other people are reading. So I would like to talk more about books in the future of these videos. Um, I would also like to get better at talking about books, just because I do think my vocab is a bit limited and... I don't know, I'd like to just use this as an opportunity to practice speaking, basically, just uh, getting my ideas out in a way that is coherent and <laughs> a bit less rambly and, I don't know, use it as an opportunity to practice thinking and considering what I'm saying before I say it, uh, rather than just rambling. Obviously, I would still like to keep things conversational and natural, but uh, 
yeah, it'd be nice to, to I don't know, making videos has really helped me uh, speaking in general, so I don't see why it shouldn't help me with the almost public live speaking aspect. So I would like to talk more about anything really, but about books, it'd be nice to have a proper discussion here. I have been reading a bit more, but we'll uh, we'll come to that later on. Uh, I did get some great recommendations from you guys as well on books and on films. Um, someone recommended Pan's Labyrinth for Spanish films, which is actually one of my favourite films, I think. Um, but all Guillermo del Torres films, is that his name? Gosh, this is, why, this is why I feel like I need to practice my speaking because I always uh, doubt myself. Yeah, all Guillermo del Toro films I absolutely love. Um, Pedro Almodovar as well. Um, no, I feel like I've spoken about that before. I always see I'm back into the kind of doubting myself mode. But because I sometimes film these videos or, as I said last time, lost some footage, I never really know what I've spoken about and what I haven't. So forgive me if I have mentioned that before. But yes, Pan's Labyrinth, I absolutely love. Um, someone also mentioned uh, Rachel Thomas recommended Wreck, which is a Spanish horror film, which again, is just one that I absolutely love. Probably one of my favourite films, I think. Um, proper horror, um, quite scary. And I also actually quite like the uh, American remake of it. I think that's one of the very few American horror remakes that actually does the original justice. I think they reinvent it enough in a way that it becomes its own film and doesn't let down the original. Um, Rachel also recommended Kingdom, which is a series on Netflix, which again, I really, really like already. Um, so it just goes to show how much you guys know me. Uh, the recommendations have been on point so far. I really shouldn't be spending this long on the sketch, but hopefully that just means I'll spend less time on inking it. But we need to get a wriggle on. I remember when I was doing these regularly, I could get one of these paintings finished in about 20 minutes. Don't think I'm at that point anymore. I mean, that would literally leave me, what, 10 more minutes to get it all done. There is something really relaxing about just drawing loads of rectangles on a page. As much as I love the fluidity of making art, it's quite comforting sometimes to just draw some straight lines and some symmetry and have everything line up with each other. And I might just add a few bits that aren't really there. Um, always love some climbing plants on the outside of a building. I actually looked on this road specifically on Google Maps just because there is a house on this road that I absolutely love whenever I pass it. It's just completely covered in wisteria on the outside. It's just just gorgeous, but um, I couldn't find it on here. I don't think there was a clear, clear picture of it. Or it might be blurred because there is a house that's blurred on this road and that's not something I've seen often. I don't know if that's something that the homeowner requests. Um, they don't want their home on Google Street View, but that just kind of adds to the mystery of the Wisteria house. Uh, yeah, it wasn't on there, so I think I'm going to maybe make some up. This actually, what I'm drawing right now, if you can see it, this is on the actual building, but, and they've also got some nice little hedges out here that I'm going to use to, wow, that's annoying, <laughs> I'm going to use to, uh, oh, yes, okay. Definitely almost forgot that there was a front door and they would like to probably get in there without having to fight through a bush. So we'll just put that in there before we add that hedge. Um, I remember, I think, getting a question last time on how I record the sound for these videos. Um, 
think someone asked that, if I'm remembering correctly. They might have asked a bit more than that, but I do just specifically remember being asked about the sound. And for these videos, um, I actually just use like a shotgun microphone that I have attached to this overhead camera. So the microphone actually hangs right in front of my face while I'm while I'm drawing and painting, which is really handy. Um, the sound might vary a bit just because I'm looking up and down while I draw and paint, but it's the most uh, kind of easy way for me to do things for these videos specifically. Uh, otherwise, uh, I normally will just leave links in the description to any of the equipment I'm using because otherwise I'll just use, uh, I don't know what they're called, but it's a Zoom H4n, it's like an external microphone that I record my audio on separately and then have to sync up with the video afterwards. But in this case it keeps it nice and simple just having it recorded straight onto the camera so when I come to edit it's just right there and ready to go. I've also been asked in the past about providing the references that I'm using um, on screen so that we can, you know, draw together at the same time. And it's something that I have considered, but A, I feel like it's extra effort in the editing department. I'm, I'm sure it's not a huge amount of effort, but as you know, I've started this series as something that I want to keep quite uh, low maintenance. But also, my concern now is more over copyright and just using images either in my videos or however um, that I could be, you know, chased up on uh, regarding copyright issues. I know that YouTube's really cracked down recently on all things copyright. So, um, yeah, having references on screen is not something that I've completely decided against. I think maybe if it's a reference that I've taken myself or... If, you know, when it comes to editing, I find it easy, um, then yeah, of course I will. But for the most part, I don't think I'll be doing a lot of that. These are just the fake hedges that I'm going to add. Uh, and also, uh, I've been asked about putting background music on. And I honestly just kind of prefer it without, just like this. Um, and I think that having it without background music gives you the option to put your own music on if you would like. Uh, I just think logistically that might be a bit of a difficult thing as well, getting the volume of the music right and finding enough copyright free music to play throughout an hour long video. Okay, time to ink and I'm gonna zoom you in here just so you can get a better view of everything that's going on. We'll make sure we're in focus. Right. And how are we doing for time? Okay, not too bad. Uh, we'll see. Also, um, I, I feel like I've run out of my finer fine liners. So this is a 0.5. I'm hoping that I can get enough, enough detail in here as much as I would like. Um, but this is the Winsor & Newton fine liner. I quite like these because they are water resistant so it allows me to get my line work in and then paint over the top. These were actually sent to me by Winsor & Newton quite a while ago uh, but yeah they've done they've done a good job with these. My hand's quite shaky at the moment. I think I need to warm up. It always takes me a while to get back into sketching when I haven't done it for a while. And I always start out trying to be perfect and I forget that I almost go for the imperfect look on purpose most of the time. Just having lines overlap, I think it gives a more natural look almost. Just showing that while it is all straight lines and symmetry, there is still imperfection and little points of interest in a building, little bits of character. A 
been wondering what day is the best day to be uploading these videos, these longer ones specifically, because I think to me this seems like a Sunday evening type thing, but um, you can probably tell my video schedule isn't exactly fixed, <laughs> just kind of upload whenever I've got something new to upload. Uh, I'm pre-recording this one, I think this is going to come out maybe a week or so after I actually record it, but otherwise. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to know what the best day is for you guys for these. Um, if it's more of a weekday thing, like something that you do after school, after work, or if maybe it's like a end of the weekend type video. And if you can hear that whistling sound, I do apologise, I have no idea what that is. Um, it's like a Friday, Friday afternoon, I don't know what all the noise is outside, but I suppose maybe because it's the summer holidays. Luckily my art room is on the back side of the house, because where our bedroom is, uh, over there, it's very noisy, we're on the main road there. Uh, so I get my lovely peaceful days in here and then our oh, noisy nights in there. I'm trying not to be too heavy handed with these lines. Honestly, I really don't mind making mistakes in this just because you can cover things up in these kinds of drawings and turn it into something that's meant to be there or it just adds to the overall character of things. So for the questions that I'm planning to answer this time, they came from comments from Instagram and from the last video. Um, but as I said, I do keep a note of all the questions that come in, so no worries if I don't get to yours. Um, it'll probably just be somewhere on the list. But this one is from Holly Emma, who asked on Instagram. Um, she said, how much planning do you put into these pages? And these pages specifically, stuff like this, will be something that I just kind of start <laughs> as the video starts um you know I'll, I'll grab any reference material or just have a flip through some books see what i'm in the mood to draw that day and then yeah turn the camera on start drawing i don't really plan the layout of the page i think that's just something that happens um and as the sketchbook fills up that's how you start ending up with things overlapping and different subjects on different pages but yeah with stuff like this i just want to be able to come in and start drawing and go with it, see what I end up with. And sometimes, you know, it doesn't turn out great, but I, you know, that's not what a sketchbook is about. It's just about getting ideas down and sketching really. Um, and if you want to do some finished pieces in here, then that's fine. Um, and it's nice to have lovely coherent spreads and nice looking pages. Um, but generally, no, I don't, I don't really plan these pages. I'm not, I think part of it is I'm not much of a planner when it comes to art anyway. I mean, I'm a massive planner in general life, but when it comes to art and drawing, I don't really, it's just, I don't know. I think to a fault really, I don't plan because I think I could end up with much more cohesive and fleshed out ideas if I would plan things. Someone that I really admire when it comes to planning, who is on the complete other end of the scale to me is Chris Hong who does such in-depth planning of every single stage and you can really see how that shines through in her finished pieces of work, just how how well it all comes together is really, um, really incredible. Um, I'll have her, her uh, channel link below. She's recently done a video for Mermaid, one of her Mermaid pieces that really goes through in so much detail how much thought and planning goes into her work. And as I said, you can really see um, just where that can get you just putting that much effort into something um but yeah I'm on the other on the other end of the scale with that I really 
I don't like to overthink a, a piece of work just like I don't know I think it's more just me being impatient and um, I don't like getting things wrong and having to redo them I'll generally only redo something once if I get it wrong if I really really want to get it finished otherwise I tend to just kind of move on which isn't a great thing and something that I need to work on and I would like to work more on planning things I just don't have the the patience for it um, I find it quite boring I just want to get to the the main thing I feel like the more I plan it the more life I drain out of it but I do think that if I could just unlock that that potential I could end up with something really on another on a le on, a, on another level Holly Emma asked also um, how much time I spend using social media she said does it play a large role in your creative life or do you find it distracting sometimes I get lost down the rabbit hole and end and all of a sudden realize I haven't done much work while researching and I think that's just something that we all we all deal with I think when you're when your work uh, involves social media, if you're creative and you're posting work online, it can be really easy to get sucked down the rabbit hole and I'll, I'll do the same thing where I'm looking for references and get sucked down that little spiral where you end up just looking for the, the right reference or whatever other excuse you make. Um, but I'm, I've been getting better at it because it really was becoming such a massive, massive burden on my time. Um, it's really shocking when you actually take stock of how much time you are spending on social media. Um, and I'm, I'm okay with Instagram, really. Um, don't spend a huge amount of time on there. Um, Facebook, I don't spend much time on at all. Um, generally, for me, it was YouTube. YouTube, I could just spend all day on it. I really, really could. So, yeah, it's become a real mission of mine to limit that time. And I've been getting really good at it because I used to go on it first thing in the morning, just watch some videos while I'm having my breakfast and that would set me up for the rest of the day where I would just want to watch more and then, you know, five minutes turns into half an hour, which turns into an hour. Um, and it's just so easy to lose that time. Whereas now, I, all I really had to do was stop going on there in the morning. Um, I did, <laughs> I'm saying it like it's easy, I did actually have to block the website on my phone and on my laptop. Um, and instead, I spend that time reading, which is great. Um, but yeah, I've I've re reclaimed that time now, and it does feel quite liberating. Uh, so yeah, when it comes to things like Instagram, um, I'll have a quick scroll. But as I said, it's not really something that I particularly find. It isn't my it isn't my thing, you know. Everyone has their social media that takes all their time. I know my mum is obsessed with Twitter. My mum's always on Twitter where I've, I really have never got Twitter. Um, so yeah, what's helped has been um, blocking it, which is like a proper cold turkey approach and replacing it with something more productive. And now I'm able to use YouTube, for example, just, I just watch my subscriptions and if I need to do some research on something, I'll do that. But I'm not in that loop anymore where I'll go on there, watch my subscriptions and then end up watching um, you know, thousands and thousands of other videos and just going from one suggestion to another and ending up watching earwax extraction videos and whatever else I would end up watching. Um, and that kind of relates to my next question, which was from Keshna Donya, who said, are you on Facebook at all? Sorry, <laughs> struggling there. Are you on Facebook at all? Um, and I have a Facebook account for this art business only because you need one to have Instagram business tools. Um, I'm really not a Facebook person, so I don't use that Facebook at all. Um, I wouldn't ask you to look it up or anything or follow me on there because it's just, it would be pointless. <laughs> There's really nothing interesting there for you guys. I, it just exists purely uh, so I can access Instagram's business tools. Um, and then on a personal level, I haven't used Facebook in a very long time. I still have a Facebook account, but I only use it to, you know, track events and use Facebook Messenger. Um, there was a time where I was on Facebook all the time, you know, on a personal level, but I don't know, I just find it quite boring um, and quite useless other than what I just said I use it for. And Keshna also said, do you ever script out your videos or do you talk freely? And 
I do a weird thing. Like videos like this obviously aren't scripted. I just have notes uh, of the different talking points I'll do. And then otherwise I'll get a video idea and it'll be so fresh in my mind and I'll just be in my head, like knowing exactly what I want to say. So I just get that down on paper. I write it like a script, but also just in the in the dialogue way, like every everything I'm planning on saying just kind of pours out. Uh, but because that's so natural and spur of the moment, it's, that's a very hard thing to then take across into the actual filming of the video, like especially if that's going to be a few days or weeks later that I actually do film it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take that initial script, quote unquote, this is really hard to do without making a sketchbook, sorry. Um, I'll take that initial script and turn it into bullet points. And that way I can kind of take that initial natural um, dialogue or monologue, I guess, because I'm just talking to myself, but I can take that and um, condense it down into a way that I'm still saying the same things, but it's still going to be natural on the day where I'm saying it. So I do, in a way, script my videos, but then I don't follow the script, if that makes sense. Um, I'll write it out the way I would be saying it and then bullet point it and... Um, try and speak as naturally and freely as I can. Uh, one thing that does happen will be that like, I'll say something and I might say it wrong. So I'll say the same thing again. Um, it's a weird, it's a weird thing that you kind of get used to repeating yourself and trying to sound as natural as you did the first time when it was natural. But other than that, um, yeah. And then sometimes if I'm doing voiceovers for my videos, especially if it's just a five minute video, then I just let the video play and say whatever I'm thinking. Um, and as we get to that section and the end of that question, um, I think we shall take a quick break. Uh, I need a drink of water and yeah, let's just get up, have a stretch. Ooh, and uh, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys, we're back in business and the clock is ticking until my delivery gets here. It's nothing exciting, it's just uh, cat litter, but because um, I get pine pellets, uh, there isn't a shop near me that sells those, so I have to order them online. Um, I've thought about getting the the big the big batches that you can get that they use for horse bedding, but you have to buy like a pallet full, like a massive amount, and I don't know where we would put that, so for now I do just buy the individual bags. forget that when I'm paint well, drawing in real time I can actually move the sketchbook around. Normally I try to keep it as still as possible whatever I'm working on because if I'm going to speed up the footage then it just jumps around too much but I suppose if you're watching it in real time um, it's not as bad. I need to bear that in mind. The only thing that might get annoying is the sound of it scraping against the table but that can't be helped I'm afraid. So now that we are in the second half, I have a few topics that I always tend to talk about. So first, I'll let you know what I've been working on outside of, you know, what you've seen. In fact, you have actually probably seen it by now. I was working on my plant postcards, which hopefully I will have had a video up earlier this week about. Um, and that was about three or four days of painting these gouache paintings of a few of the plants that I have around the house. I was hoping to like document them, just make a record of them, almost like you keep a baby record book of their first steps and stuff like that. Um, I just wanted to have a note of their names and who they are, what they are, um, and it, um, like keep a record of what pots they're in, which is kind of a random one. But uh, It was a really fun project, like a fun self-initiated commission. Um, nice to set myself a good challenge and get myself creating a collection of works that would go together. Uh, it's been a while since I've done anything new for the shop and halfway through that I did decide that I would be putting those into the shop so if you're interested they are up for sale now hopefully uh, which did put a bit of pressure on to make them perfect but um, I'm happy I'm really happy with them I'm really happy with myself for finishing it and uh, I loved how they turned out and it was actually the uh, let's have a look these drawings 
uh, that I did for the stickers that reminded me how much I love this fine liner watercolour style, which is what made me want to do this today. So that project went really well. That was really, really fun. Um, just something that I'm really glad I did. And I would love to do uh, more things like it, more of those self-initiated projects where I can create more work. I would love to add more stuff to the shop and have more things just in my portfolio on my website. Uh, it's been a while since I've made work that I'm really in love with and really want to display and have, you know, representing me as an artist. So that's been one of my goals for this year. Um, I know that at some point I want to rejig my website, get it up to date, but it would be nice to do that with new artwork to go on there as well. So since then, um, I actually finished that all yesterday or the day before, so um, still fresh in my mind, but the thing that I've been thinking about has been trying oil paints, which I think I've mentioned before, but talked myself out of, and now um, I'm officially going to do it. I have bought the paints, I've bought the extra bits and bobs, and I will be making a video on trying oils for the first time, because I think it could be useful for anyone else who wants to do that. Um, it is somewhat of a learning curve but also not as complicated as I think it seems at first uh, so I would like to make a video on that but I haven't tried them yet um, probably next week uh, so that's exciting a bit daunting but I have high hopes I think which might be a dangerous thing to say might be famous last words but I do think that I don't know it could really bring something to my art and if not it would just be fun to try it's one of those things I've always wanted to try so I just don't see why not at this point. Um, definitely was somewhat of an investment. Uh, I think I spent about £200 altogether on the things I needed, but I bought a set of Gamblin oil paints, which are good quality. Um, so I think they do warrant the price. I think I spent about £130 on the set of paints. Uh, but when you think about it, I could spend that much on markers and <laughs> wouldn't bat an eyelid so yeah I think it'll be worth it but we'll see we'll see I am really looking forward to it uh, probably won't be getting on to that till maybe next Monday because uh, I've got uh, quite a weekend up ahead uh, quite looking forward to it I am out this evening uh, just having a casual meet up with a friend and then it's a friend's birthday on Saturday so I can imagine that the weekend after that is going to be spent in bed <laughs> but after that um be back to work and on to my adventures in oil okay that is enough of that sketch we are i don't know if we've got enough time to do uh a finished watercolor painting but i'll try if i don't finish it in this video i'll just show you like a time lapse of the rest of it um i'm using these Daniel Smith watercolours in just, just this little palette that you've seen before. I got this off Amazon. Uh, let's see. Right, and the other thing that we've talked about now that I think will become a regular thing will be uh, what I've been reading. So, um, yeah, last time, I think I said at the end of that video that I... I'm getting like anxious about starting this painting just because I don't really know where to start. <laughs> Remember when I was painting buildings regularly, it became like second nature. And now that I'm almost back at the beginning with it, I can't, can't really remember what, what I'm doing. Okay, so yeah, I said I was about to start Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson um, because I had seen a bit of the film on. I already had had the book and had it on my list of things to read and I'd seen a bit of the film on and thought I'd better not watch it because I don't want to spoil it. Um, and yeah, I liked it. It was a nice um, mystery, bit twisty-turny. It's about a woman that uh, wakes up every day forgetting who she is. Um, she's there with her husband or the man that says he's her husband and she's kind of doubting it but also doesn't know who to trust she's got this doctor who she's keeping a secret from her husband um 
she's got this journal that she's keeping and on the front of the journal it says don't trust Ben I think her husband's called Ben uh, so you're wondering I mean you know something's up you know that you can't trust any of the people in her life um, and you're just wondering what the truth is about what happened to her why she lost her memory um, and why there are so many secrets around it um, so it was it was an interesting interesting ride uh, did keep me did keep my attention uh, I did keep wanting to pick it up and find out where things were going um, I do think I mean it's been a couple of weeks since I finished it now but I think I oh yeah I did <laughs> I remember talking to my mum about it because she'd read it as well um, my mum my mum keeps a record of the book she's read just on a Excel spreadsheet. So I mentioned that I was reading this book to her and she said, what's it about? And I told her and she said, yeah, that sounds familiar. Went on her Excel spreadsheet and found that she'd, re that she'd read it. Um, but she asked what I thought was going to happen in the end when I was about a third of the way through. And I pretty much predicted it. I, I mean, I went a bit too far with it, but I had a good idea of what was going on. But that doesn't mean it's necessarily predictable. I just kind of... I don't know. There's only a few options, I think, of what's going on, of who you can't trust. And but yeah, I would I would recommend it. I think um, it was done. It was done well. I liked how it was written and it definitely did keep my interest. And it was a good, quick and easy read. Not in a. Oh, sorry about that. Normally I remember to <laughs> turn my phone off. Um, not in the sense that it's really simple, but just that it's. I like a book that reads like a film, like that I can really visualise and feel like I'm almost watching. So yeah, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I liked the story, I found it original. Um, and yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was executed well. So I might look into more of what SJ Watson has written, um, if you guys can recommend anything. Um, any kind of next steps after that book, then that'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, I do love hearing from fellow fellow book people um because i've had some great recommendations so far already um lots of new things being added to the list of books i'm going to be reading so after that i read the lonely londoners by sam selvan um and that's a book that i actually have read before i had to read it when i was at uni i was studying english lit and i was only there for I don't know, a month or two uh, before dropping out. But this was one of the books that I did read in the time that I was there um, because our English literature course, the first semester was about the literature of London. So this is a book um, that kind of documents the lives of a few uh, West Indians that have just moved to the UK. Um, it's almost biographical just in the sense that the author himself is from Trinidad and it kind of follows the same anecdotes of things that have either happened to him or people that he knows uh, it's not got a specific like linear narrative to it it's quite um anecdotal as I said it's just little snippets of the lives of these people that have come from the Caribbean to start a new life in London and um I found it interesting particularly just because it is like a part of my history. Um, my dad's parents came here from Jamaica, um, probably just before this book was set. So my grandparents came here during the Windrush era, which is when um, people from the Caribbean, because uh, of the Commonwealth, were invited here to live in England, um, to work, uh, given citizenship, um, because, you know, we all share the same queen. Um, so yeah, that is like a bit of my history. Those It ties in with my grandparents and how they came here. Um, so I found it interesting just to see that perspective on it, um, to see those stories. And a lot of it does tie into things that I've heard about um, from either my dad or my grandmother. Um, and also even um, because my mum's dad came here from Nigeria. Uh, there is a Nigerian character in this as well. And I know there are parts of it that really ring true to what I've heard and I don't know it just almost felt like I was reading a bit of my history um it is written in like a half creole patois type um dialect and half half not so it takes a little bit of getting used to I think to read it but a lot of the time I was just kind of reading it in my 
in my grandmother's accent, <laughs> which helped a lot. And there were a couple of characters that did remind me of her. Um, there were certain parts where you can just hear hear her voice. Um, but it's a short book. It's about 130 pages. Um, really, I don't know, it's, like, it's quite pleasant to read. There's a lot of really nice description in it. Um, it can also be... It's not even, it's not even like a sad one. I remember telling my mum I was reading it. She was like, is it sad? And I was like, no, not really. It's just like real. Um, and it's quite, obviously there'll be moments of racism, but it's done quite flippantly. I think it's just like the reality of it, like coming to England in the 50s. Um, just how you would expect black people to be treated then. And it's not all, it's not all that way. But just the usual, you know, narrative of they're coming here to steal our jobs and stuff like that. Yeah, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Um, whoever you are, I think it's a good little insight to that time and the people. Um, so yeah, that was The Lonely Londoners by Sam Selvin. Uh, the copy that I had actually had an essay at the front by another author who helped make sense of things a bit more um just contextualize it so um i'll leave a link below to the specific copy of the book that i had but it helped a lot even as a londoner it helped to get um a bit more help with like the places they're talking about like they talk about the water a lot and i was thinking was, i remember the first time i read it, i was thinking i don't know any of these places the water and the circus and Hillgate, but it's just um, nicknames for places like Bayswater and Notting Hillgate and Piccadilly Circus. So even just for things like that, that little essay at the beginning really helped. But it also tells you a bit more about the author and his journey and um, how that book came to be. And there's a lovely line right at the end where he talks about, I mean, the main character is called Moses. And like I said, he's kind of um, kind of like a a version of the author himself and you really see that right at the end where he says that he was looking out at the river um he'd heard about these i don't know jamaicans that had made it big by writing a book and they've gone from being taxi drivers or whatever um and now all of a sudden they're famous and the main character moses thinks i wonder if i could do that one day and that's kind of how the book ends and i think that it was a nice wrapping up of that little i don't know that little story that <laughs> didn't really go anywhere but also did go somewhere Now that actually took me longer to read than I expected. Um, as I said, it was only maybe 150 pages max. Um, so I thought, you know, this will only take me a couple of days, but at the time I think life took over a bit. So um, I thought I was gonna have a few more books to talk about, but yeah, that was pretty much it for the ones that I finished since we last spoke. I've just started a new book yesterday called The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin. It's about a group of four siblings who, uh, as children, visit a fortune teller to find out how or when, when they'll die. Um, and so far, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it kind of reminds me of The Haunting of Hill House, not because it's haunted or anything. Um, it's not that kind of story, I don't think. But um, I don't know, just the dynamic of the four siblings is almost the same in that there's the, you know, uptight oldest brother um, and the oldest sister who's who were driven and, you know, career minded. And then there's the naive and innocent younger, youngest brother um, who seems quite vulnerable and the almost wild child middle sister. Um, so that dynamic is quite similar, I think, to The Haunting of Hill House, which I absolutely loved. I loved, I really hope that comes back. Um, but so far, obviously, like I said, it's not a haunting type thing. Um, I just kind of see those siblings in these siblings with that dynamic. And also it follows the same-ish format where you do follow one specific character uh, for a episode um, for a period of time. Um, but I can't say too much about it yet, just because I'm really just in maybe the first, I don't know, the first quarter of the book. Uh, but I like how it's written. Um, it's a bit more, uh, not flowery. I wouldn't say it was flowery. I wouldn't say it was too, um, too uh, you know, overly descriptive. But it's a bit more poetic, I guess, than things that I've read in a while um and that's not to say that it's even overly overly poetic um not that that's a problem it's just 
an, an adjustment from what I've been reading recently. Um, and yeah, it's just really nicely written. I, I've had some good descriptions pop up in there. Um, and there was also a little bit, like, it's not a romance book uh, so far anyway, but there is like a little bit of flirtation and romance and just as part of the story. And I don't normally read that kind of stuff, but this time, oh God, it's, been, it's this morning has just been making me absolutely swoon. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's it's got potential. I'm enjoying it so far. Um, and I'll let you know how it goes once I've finished it. So next time, I'm sure I will have finished it. And kind of stuck on what I'm going to read next. I didn't even know I had this book, but it must be one that my mum gave to me a while ago. Um, because I was looking for my next book. I didn't want to do another short one, uh, but I do like to change things up from book to book. So I didn't know how to follow The Lonely Londoners. Okay. How are we doing for time? Got about 10 minutes left, so I don't think we'll be finishing in this in this real-time section, but as I said, I promise I'll show you the rest of the process. And then otherwise, uh, for things that I've been watching, um, I discovered a YouTube channel called Rafi Was Here Studios, um, and it's this guy and his partner, I believe, um, and they are both artists and they kind of rant and ramble and chat about different art topics, different kind of career topics. Um, I actually found their channel because they were talking about Etsy and their new changes for um, deli like free delivery, their new policy on that. Um, it's just really interesting to hear their points of view and just they, they're funny. Um, they're, they've got their head screwed on and I think they've got a really useful and interesting insight into a career in art um so yeah if you're interested obviously i'll have links below but i think they're definitely worth checking out or um that channel is definitely worth checking out and their work as well um they both have really unique um styles of work that they do i also discovered a new youtube channel while i was looking into oil painting stuff um it's this girl maria Silias, i think um she's a venezuelan oil painter um illustrator um and yeah she has this really really unique style of work um almost it's almost like children's book illustrations but done in oil and yeah just a really interesting process her videos are really lovely i know that you would you would love the aesthetic of her videos um it just seems like a a real i don't know insight into her life and her studio and the work that she does um and also I learned a little bit about uh her country she doesn't live she doesn't live there anymore but she has a video about why she left and um a dictatorship there so yeah I would I would love for you to check out her channel um and her work and then I watched <laughs> watched this film I think was it last night either the night last night or the night before uh watched this film called February on Netflix. It's a horror film um, with Emma Roberts. And I've had it on my list for a while. I was looking for something to watch. I was torn between that and another film, but I decided to just get this one out of the way. Uh, and yeah, I was kind of right to not be sure about it. It's, it's about these two girls at a, I think, like Catholic or, I don't know, I'm going to say Catholic, um, like boarding school. And on Christmas break their parents don't show up to pick them up so they're stuck at the school for a week and uh there's like something weird going on there's like some haunting or something um yeah I don't know I feel like I I see what it was trying to do and I think it did quite well I think the acting was good um I really was invested in one of the characters um I think the story was quite interesting, I guess. Uh, I don't know, it's just, maybe I just watched it at the wrong time. I think maybe I just wasn't in the mood for that kind of film, but it didn't, it just didn't really do it for me. And that's a shame because that is kind of my type of film. Um, I think if you like, here's the thing, I really loved the film Hereditary. Hereditary, like, 
did did something to me like it really affected me it really stuck with me i thought it was so well done i thought the cinematography was amazing the sound um the little extra bits and bobs the tiny details i think it was just an all-round amazing film and i watched that having no idea what it was about when i went into it so it really blew me away absolutely loved it and this film i think it came out i'm in fact i'm pretty sure it came out before hereditary but it gives me a similar vibe um, similar themes, and I won't spoil it for anyone that hasn't seen either of those films, but um, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, uh, but it, I don't know, it didn't... It felt it felt very, very similar. Um, it had the same kind of eerie, unsettling feel to it. But by the time this film, February, ended, I was just kind of like, oh, okay, <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, I guess there was a certain point where I thought it ended and I thought it better not end like that it better not end like that um, and it didn't but I don't know it was it was okay I don't want it to sound like it wasn't a good film because it was okay it was okay it just wasn't for me at that moment in time um, so yeah I'll give it I'll give it a, a 7 out of 10 and I won't I won't be watching it again <laughs> Uh, but I did watch um, A Simple Favour, which is also on Netflix, um, with Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick. Um, it's kind of like a weird thriller type film um, where, like, it starts with this woman who's saying, you know, my best friend's been missing for the past five days. And then you kind of learn that they haven't been friends for that long. Um, yeah, I mean, I remember seeing the trailer a lot. Um, like, it was advertised to me a lot on YouTube before YouTube videos and at first I thought that looks okay like it didn't it didn't look like my kind of film but eventually I thought I'll watch it and it took me a while to get into it because it was very it's quite um over the top it's quite exaggerated um it has a it has a <sighs> it's very stylistically done just in terms of dialogue and I know it's quite quirky I guess I don't know I don't really ha know how to describe it but it took some getting used to um the way it's kind of funny <laughs> um but also mysterious uh but I got really into it and I also kind of fell in love with Blake Lively which is odd if you knew if you could see her character in that film I think you wouldn't really expect that but it made me think I would love for Blake Lively to be my friend she just seems like even though obviously it was just a character um and the character wasn't really a great friend uh, I don't know I, I, I really got into it it was like a it was like a campy Gone Girl um, and I love Gone Girl um, it wasn't what I was expecting but it, it impressed me it made me very happy um, it made me laugh it made me chuckle um, and laugh out loud a couple of times which I wasn't expecting when I went into it uh, so yeah I would, I would definitely rec recommend that one it's called A Simple Favour um, and Anna Kendrick did well in it as well um, yeah I really that one really surprised me And then the last film that I've watched that I can remember was uh, a film called Man Up, which I saw, it was just on BBC, BBC One, I think, one night. Um, I had been out with friends and uh, the night ended early and I still had like a whole bottle of wine left. So I got home and I was just sitting there on my own because Ozzy was out and turned on this film and I got so into it. I can't even tell you. I think it might actually be on Amazon Prime because right at the end there was a little Amazon Prime logo. But um, it's like a proper old, not old, but it's quite a new film, but like old school british -y rom rom-com. Um, and I say I say old school in like a... God, that, <laughs> my older viewers are going to hate me for this, but in like a Love Actually way. And I, it's not that Love Actually is old. It's just like, you know, that era of British rom-coms, like the Bridget Jones era um it reminded me of that and to my older viewers i'm not saying that that is old because you know that is my my era as well uh, well kind of but um i really i didn't expect to get into it i might have been partly to do with the wine but um i yeah i really liked it i would really recommend it i actually loved it i loved it i couldn't stop talking about it the next day with ozzy um it made me cry like ball like a baby um but it also made me laugh out loud. Um, I was just in my emotions while I was watching it. Um, it was just funny. It was just nice. It was one of those 
one of those like heartwarming and I don't know I don't know it was good it was good I would if I if I could recommend one film in particular for you guys to watch it was uh this one man up I really didn't expect to like it whatsoever but it it did some things it did it for me it really did but um that's really it and I think we're coming to the end now of this video and I'm also feeling myself lose focus so I'm gonna down down my brush for a little bit um wait for this delivery to come and then I'll make sure that I record the rest of this process for you guys uh, so you can enjoy it with a bit of music um but yeah no I think it's coming along well I think I've done a decent job um and yeah if you've got any comments or questions or suggestions um I would love to hear from you guys but otherwise thank you so much for watching um Hang on, let me just stop and give you a proper goodbye. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll see you soon for the next video. Um, and yeah, enjoy whatever the rest of the day has in store for you. Bye.